as computer. Okay, thanks for being here. Those of you who are here, um, some recording for people who aren't here. And what I wanna do today is go over the general way I have the assignment set up for the final assignment, but there's a lot of flexibility because people are in, a, are in really different spots with their work and with their intentions. So I've tried to make everything about as flexible as I can make it. Um, and then there's just a couple of things to go over um, uh, from here on out through the rest of the semester. So you've got another song writing assignment. Um, you, you, we're, we're just writing original songs and commenting on each other's material right now. And then you have before, uh, um, excuse me, before fall break, you have uh, the cover of somebody else's song due. And that is worth double the points. Um, I place a high premium on listening to other people's work in this class because it's a community element. So just to be aware of, as you're listening to other people's work um, in class over the next few weeks and giving them feedback, you want to be learning one of their songs and providing other people enough material for your own work so that they can um, easily cover your own songs and feed your stuff back to you. Um, and so that's worth 10 points. M most assignments in the class are worth five points each if you look at the syllabus, but that one's worth 10 points. Um, and then we move into this, this uh, final EP assignment. So I'm going to share my um, uh, desktop with you right now. Um, window. And go to our class. Can everybody see that okay? I can't see your faces or anything. Somebody can chime in. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so next week we will have our last um, sort of uh, synchronous class session. And that will be that our visitor is going to be um, Tom Murphy, who is a songwriter and kind of like noise artist in his own right. But he's also doc, he's been a, a photographer and he has documented, I mean, more than 20 years, I want to say, of of music, both in Denver and around other places. And he's writing a book about the history of Denver music, but he's not just into Denver music. He's like into underground music in general, and he just knows a lot. He knows a lot about mixing. He just knows a lot about, about especially DIY culture. He's like the guy who's like at every show, even if there's only like three people there when there are shows. Tom is like that kind of guy. So please um, uh, tune in next week for that. And then we're going to maneuver into to, um, a different sort of space. I will still hold this hour live for people who want to talk to me. Um, uh, during this, the, our normal synchronous time, I'll just make it like open office hours. Of course, I have office hours before and after this anyway. But um, so I'm not going anywhere if, if you need to talk through stuff with me. Uh, so we've got for the, just the next couple of weeks, we've got a couple of more original songs to be um, throwing up on there and getting feedback from. And then you're choosing a cover. The cover is due the Saturday before fall break. And then that week in between, which is oftentimes called dead week, um, if we were doing a face-to-face -face class, we wouldn't be meeting in class in person that week because people would be collaborating with each other. Um, uh, uh, what I've done is I've created in our modules, if I go here, a... Um, so that would be week 16. Um, if we're skipping over, so fall break is like week, week 15, if we're just counting straight. Um, I've just made a grade check-in, and if you click on the pages here, um, I've just reprinted this from the syllabus in our grade check-in. What I want everybody to do during that finals week, or sorry, the week before finals, um, is to add up everything like like that the, you've done in class. If you hadn't done anything, just to take five points off. So add up what your grade is, you know, obviously without the 20, final 25% here um, for the EP, because that won't be done, but everything else should have been turned in by then. Um, and then I have a grade scale here. It's basic, like 
should be familiar to those of you who've been in school. Um, and then if you go to our assignment, what I, the assignment is just that I want you to um, answer these questions, feedback to me what you think your grade is. If you're turning in missing work, when are you going to get it to me by? <laughs> like, if you're not getting it to me by the end of that week. Um, and this is all just to have communication, um, good communication between you and me in terms of your grade. Um, I always ask people to um, tell me what their expected grade for the course is. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I just give anybody the grade that they expect, but that if I'm giving somebody a grade that they did not expect, then it allows me to give you um, a particular feedback for why. Um, but as you've noticed over the semester, like I've been pretty as just about pass fail for every assignment. There's rarely do I take um, even a couple of points off unless unless it was like a lyrics assignment and people only turned in a few sets of the lyrics exercises um, when you needed all two weeks. That's where I was sort of taking off points. But generally speaking, like for workshops, it's like all or nothing. You get the five points um, and that should be all in black or sorry in canvas for you um <clears throat> so that's the week that's what we're doing over the next few weeks before we get to the finals week which is when our final assignment is due so before i go into the final assignment um uh, does anyone have questions about what's happening over the next few weeks we'll see. Well, jeffrey's having zoom trouble so let me just give him the link again here Oh, he might be stuck. Hang on. Let me just pull out of screen sharing view because I can't see. Oh, there. <laughs> this is the tr problem was trying to screen share um, at the same time. Okay. I'm trying to Zoom meeting. Are you here, Jeff? I'm just going to stop screen share so I can see you all. No one's waiting in the waiting room now. Okay. Go back here. So like I said, um, if I come back to our any any questions about what we're doing for, between now and finals week, before I talk about the final assignment. Okay. Yeah, Roger, I had a question. Um, I put it in the chat. Do you have a suggestion for the best way to collaborate with our classmates for, to cover their song? Yeah. Um, well, the idea is hopefully that you have enough information from just what they've posted into uh um as they've up uploaded their original song um you can feel free to reach out to people you don't you don't need to collaborate with somebody to cover their song is what i'm saying um uh, if you want to you um, can just go to people in canvas on the uh, left side, hand side and reach out to them about things or if somebody mumbled something or like the lyrics for your something or somebody you're doing something really drastic like one guy one year put like decided to put a rap in the middle of someone else's song if you feel like you're taking like too much advantage and you want to reach out um that's fine um sometimes people are finishing songs that other because pe people have posted songs that are workshop songs and they're not done yet and so you're sort of like guessing your own ending for the song as well um uh, I think that that's that's good feedback to hear for other people um certainly if you were going to use somebody else's song for anything of course you would be obligated to um, reach out to them for permissions and stuff like that um, but the sky is the limit in terms of creativity it's really like giving your your cover song is is a way of giving feedback for the way that you hear their material um uh, and, you know, usually, like, because we haven't, 
um, we did kind of online for for dime at the end of spring last semester but usually we would do these in class and and people would just come perform the song and they wouldn't even say whose song it is and we would like in class people we, we would guess to see if we remember whose song it was um and then if we were people were performing it live in the final they of course would announce whose whose song it was and so sometimes just to be clear um for the peer covers assignment um you might get we might get like three or four people that cover the same person's song so there is the possibility that a hit comes out of just what people are are doing um and then and that might be that we have a discussion about that kind of afterwards like why you know why did this one person's song get covered multiple times was it because it was really clearly delivered in lyrics and chords and it was just easy to do was it because it was catchy aesthetically and everybody wanted to do a different version of it um i've noticed i mean the work that you guys are turning in not everybody's of course turning everything in at the same time um which is cool with me except that uh we're getting towards the end of the semester and it is my job to put a grade on you guys <laughs> Um, uh, and I do the, I do my grades almost pass fail so that I'm not giving you evaluative content. Like I'm not, I'm not giving you some sort of taste-based criticism on your work. Um, we can have the taste-based discussion or the aesthetics discussion, but that has nothing to do with the actual grade that people, um, with a non-evaluative grading, um, uh, system. Uh. Um, but I, I think that it is worth sometimes talking about like why why you know one one person's song popped out. A lot of people did really timely stuff this weekend. If you are if you haven't listened to what everybody turned in in the past weekend, there's like Donatella, your your song is like really timely. The the lyrics um, uh, uh, that that you did and um, and 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 Mario had like a trick or treat line and his in his song um i don't know that chris you that you were going for something creepy but like the revolution number nine kind of thing was really like really well done and and uh and it's like i don't know the uneasiness of even jeff's song like like there's there's a kind of unease and, and a creep factor that i think is is happening this week so it's just weird how collectively that kind of stuff is kind of um, uh, uh, popping out as well. That's worth discussion. Um, it's and then, and then so as I go into the final, there I'll give you some other stuff to think about as we talk about um, collaboration. Um, uh, did that kind of answer your question, Chris? Okay. Anyone else have questions about stuff leading up to the final? Okay. Is everything, um, oh, sorry, that was my dog. Is everything explained, um, like, when everything is due and stuff? Because the thing that you're describing? Yeah, let me just, if you, the easiest thing for me, it's in various places on Canvas, but over the courses I've been teaching, if you go to our syllabus page and you just scroll down here, there's course summary, and it's, like, got everything listed that was due and then up to like the 19th the stuff i just unleashed this morning the grade check-in which is just like a little what's like one point complete or incomplete and then the songwriting assignment yeah i just that's cool i just wanted to make sure that i could like what you're saying i could like find it at a later date and stuff and so yeah perfect yeah yeah and and as always, I'm generally like like flexible around around due dates. Like the for the songwriting final, I don't really need it exactly by midnight on December 9th. But if you're going to be turning it into me later, um, uh, then then that finals week or something something has gone down. Like um, I think I think it was Ashley who said that her her computer her laptop died or something this week. If something like that happens, please just get in touch with me and let me know. Um, so if you're not turning something in on time, especially at the end of the semester, let me know to when when you are turning it in so that I can look for it um, amidst my all of my other classes. So if I click on our songwriting final here, um, I'll just walk this down. 
and just know that I can be flexible with whatever your needs are. And so just before I even start this, like one of the things that came up that I was kept coming up in my mind, should I put something in about this specifically? And I decided not to was the like Jeff, when Jeff Linsenmeyer was here a few weeks ago, he was talking about creating a reel, which is like, like creating like some, like your own sort of song videos, like, as an example, like an advertisement for your own ad song as an advertisement or, or your songwriting, um, that there's room for that kind of thing if that's where your mind is at for your work. So as I'm reading this down, um, just think like what I want us to have get out of the EP assignment is whatever is best for us individually as artists, wherever we're at. Um, uh, but the way I've conceived the class, if I start walking down here, um, let me just give us a little. Roger, can I ask a question? Yep. Uh, what about like the uh, the folk song cover that we did at the beginning? Yeah. Can we include that on our EP? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that um, uh, if you if if you, so if you're putting stuff onto a Bandcamp page, if you were putting a cover of someone else from class, you would want to make sure to get permission or something. But if it's one of the folk songs. Um, like, I mean, that's kind of public domain music anyway. And so that would be fine. And I encourage it, um, covers in general, just because I think that it gives the audience a sense of who we are. Um, and that's why I have like a five to eight song EP. Um, there are five songs in the class that you were technically supposed to workshop five originals. Um, but some people wrote more than that, like with the, Somebody might have taken the Jen Denro poem assignment and they might be like, oh, I really want to like work on that or, or hash it out or I want that on my EP. Um, and Jen Denro will be fine with you guys publishing her, her stuff. Um, uh, um, uh, or, or the cover, the like, I mean, just the general cover. Um, if you were really going to release a record just in terms of copyright stuff, if you were going to press stuff, you would probably technically have to go through the Harry Fox agency to get um, copyright privileges and you would have to pay in advance. So just to let you guys know, that's the rules. I know people put, myself included, put covers of big artist songs onto my SoundCloud page all the time and nothing really happens. But um, if you were really, you know, going to start selling a release on your Bandcamp page or something and charging money and you had a Bruce Springsteen cover, you're asking for trouble. Um, uh, other questions on that? Um, Did you say you wanted us to have permission uh, from our for our peer cover as well? If you were going to release it to the actual public public, yeah, um, certainly. Um, uh, you would have to work. And, and I've got some questions related to that in, in, as we go down here. Um, so, you know, an eight song EP is kind of a long EP, but I've seen them that long. I mean, some albums are eight, only eight songs long. Um, I put an EP in quotes here. It's the language that people are using. I don't like it, but I don't get to choose these things. An EP traditionally was an extended play, which meant that it was songs that did not fit on an LP, which is a long playing 12 inch record. Um, and if you had more and you weren't doing a double album, then you would do an EP that would be a separate release. Um, <clears throat> if you are, any of you are Beatles fans, obviously I know Chris, <laughs> Chris is a Beatles fan, even though I missed her thing the other night. Um, look at the Beatles catalog, like they had an ethic in the 1960s that they would never put a song on a album that they'd already released as a single. And so if you want their singles, you have to buy those collections of single albums, right? Um, uh, and which, that, that was their business. It was a good business ethic. Um, and it, they, they stuck with it, I think, almost to the end, up to Abbey Road when um, their manager wasn't around uh, anymore. Um, we've, in some ways, gone back to a kind of 50s type of marketing system where in the 1950s, people weren't selling records so much. They were selling singles. 
um, and there are this cascading or wave-like releases. So uh, how you want to conceive about delivering your stuff is all going to be, there's going to be room for all of that stuff in here. So you can think of it like, well, maybe I have a five song EP, but I'm going to do a staggered release for the three other songs leading into the EP. All of that kind of stuff is fine to, to be thinking about. Um, so let me just kind of read this down and then think up questions and then I'll um, um, I'll handle questions at the end here and, and definitely other options. Keep, um, I'm open to other options. Uh, so your final project for songwriting is going to depend on where you're at with your own music. The basic idea for the course is an EP of five to eight songs worth of material that you've written for this class this semester, um, five being the stuff that you wrote specifically. Uh, however, the ways we release materials and our individual intentions will differ. For example, some students will are doing their own production um, at an already publishable level. Um, uh, others are just learning digital audio workstations or intending to work with producers. Um, so for example, Zane's material to my ear tends to be publishable like as it's ready. And I have a really wide range for what I think is publishable in terms of, I like a lot of DIY music. I like a lot of, I can, I'm, I can handle tape hiss and noise and things like that. But uh, Zane emailed just before uh, class today and he says he's in the studio today. Um, he had studio time booked and so he's not in our session right now. Um, so that's interesting to me because I generally hear Zane's work as being published, publishable ready, but obviously he's booked studio time too. So. Um, and I don't think he's booked studio time for everything that he's turned in this semester. That would be really expensive. Um, other people are just learning digital audio workstations for the first time, and that's fine too. Um, uh, so I would, uh, so I would, I would like, so so some students are doing their own production at an already published level. Others are learning digital audio workstations or intending to work with producers. So I would advise this for anybody, no matter how confident you feel about your production experience, to attempt working with someone else from class as a production advisor on at least one of your tracks during our last few weeks. You may have someone in mind already. Sometimes in my comments I've suggested, like 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 in this week's things, and you do not have to take my suggestions ever for any of my comments on your on your material, but. Uh, um, uh, I, I suggested, I was like, oh, I wonder what Mario would sound like singing, I think, one of Ashley's songs or earlier in my comments today. Um, <clears throat> so you might have someone in mind already, or you may get inspired by someone else's peer cover. Like someone might cover someone else from class and be, you might be like, damn, I want them to cover my song, or I want them to give me production feedback on my material. Right. Um, and this is just comes down to community and helping people out. Obviously, we've had generous guests in class as well, um, such as Maria Kohler, right? Kitty Crimes, who just said, I would like to hear your stuff. I'm, I'm down for collaborating. Um, I feel like the, some of the folks last week were feeling the same way, too, if you wanted to reach out to Wheelchair Sports Camp. Um, uh, uh, Joshua Trinidad definitely seemed open to that sort of thing. Um, uh, but just for community cohesiveness in class, I think that it's a good idea to reach out to somebody in class. Um, also, because it is, establishes connections beyond our semester, which I think is important to do. Um, uh, so I'm not requiring that you produce each other's work, but it's a good time to try it since we have a little community here. Um, I'll never force collaborations on, on my students. Um, I know some of you are doing it already. <laughs> like Devin and Alex Creighton tend to work together on, on a lot of projects I've noticed. Um, so these are the questions that you'll need to have answered when you turn in your material. And there's just a whole, there, there's a whole list of them. And it's really just about kind of getting you into a zone of, of what of what you're going to do with the work for this semester. So how done is your work? What needs to happen to complete the project? And I'm thinking of this as the entire project as a whole, like, like your EPs, not just each individual song. How done is your song? 
Um, uh, so how will you go about finishing your project, pr finishing your work or, or the EP project if you um, if it's not done? Uh, if you're not done, uh, we will consider the assignment pre-production. And so pre-production is what you do before going into the studio like Zane was doing today. Like you have a collection of songs you're working with, maybe a producer or your band, and you're deciding what you're going to do in the studio to those songs, right? And you create production notes. Um, and so for me, like, you know, just in when my band was doing it, you know, we, we had a month booked out in the studio and the two weeks before that, um, Simon Raymond um, from Cocktoo Twins and uh, Giles Hall, who was going to be the engineer, came and they just came to our practices and we made production notes so that we had a plan. Um, so if if you're in pre-production, then you want this sort of stuff. So you want a detailed description of for each song for what you would like to do for a final version. This includes having somebody else sing it, right? That's okay to have other people sing our material. It's just a songwriting class. Um, you want to include sonic examples, or which is like, you know, references to other songs. If you want to throw in a YouTube link to, I don't know, there's a Beck song or like, um, like that it's like, oh, I want this kind of sound um, on it. Like, like just include those types of references. Um, uh, describe the aesthetic sound quality. If you're doing something retro, like, um, and you're going for that kind of sound, that's kind of the description that I want. Um, you need to research some local studios for cost and plan a time frame. Um, and this is not like saying that you have to actually book studio time or anything. I just want you to have researched what it would take to finish your project. Like how, and then um, if you want to include a producer, what could you pay that person? Um, and what would you pay your musicians? So if you've said, Oh, I want like a symphony orchestra on like this this soundtrack. It's like okay, that's great. How are you going to accomplish the the thing to get to the vision that you want? Um, and then add a budget to show how much you. Um, I've got product here spelled wrong, but um, uh, how much your final product will cost. So this is all like really practical stuff. And it's more of a thought exercise than than it is um, me expecting you actually book studio time or pay musicians. Um, then two, I want you to research um, uh, existing. And so if if you're if you're not in pre production, then it, then just describe um, what you're gonna do with your with your work, right? Um, and then this stuff sort of follows that line anyway. Um, so you want to research um, some existing local or national record labels. And I think everybody should do this, even if you're planning to self-release your stuff. Um, what specific, so I want you to try to come up with at least three record existing record labels um, that might be interested in your material. I want you to say, you know, what aesthetic sensibilities um, are at work in your material that might be of interest to them. Um, if you want to reach out to them, that's fine with your work, but you don't have to. Um, I just want you to have a sense of, of, of what's out there. Um, delivery modes. Um, <clears throat> I want you to tell us how you will be releasing your material and you can release it for our final if you want, that's fine. Um, uh, will you be using YouTube or SoundCloud or Bandcamp or Spotify or all of these sorts of things? Many of you are doing this already, so it shouldn't be that, you know, much more decorum than what you already do. Um, but just tell us, um, are you going to release the whole entire EP at once? Are you going to stagger your releases? Just tell us what your plan is um, and what your strategy is for that plan. <clears throat> uh, if you're just using your EP as demos, um, please research some songwriters and talent companies um, where you might be able to place your songs to get them recorded. Um, include if you're again if you're just using your EP as a demo as I'm a songwriter I don't really want to be a performer. Include at least one local artist and tell us how you would go about working with them or playing or p paying them etc. Um, and that could include just like reaching out to somebody in class and being like hey would you cover my song? Would you would you be willing to perform one of my songs? Here here it is. I want to hear you do it. Um, 
Uh, I know we're in a weird spot for live venues, um, uh, but depending on whether you're in Detroit or whether you're in Colorado, um, I want you to try and just dig around for venues in town. Um, if you, some of you might know places already um, for where your work might might um, land particularly well. Um, so in in Denver, you know, like, you know, would you, would your work <laughs> um, do better at like a DIY venue like Seventh Circle or would it do better at one of the bigger um, theaters in town such as the Bluebird or the Gothic? And then how would you go about getting there? Right. So it might be looking at um, who the booking agents are. Um, looking at their websites for what they're doing for COVID. Are they even having live shows? Broadway Roxy is or has been having live shows, but um, so some places are doing that. And so I just want you to, it's, it's really just about reaching out into your local area and seeing what people are doing in terms of live music right now. It could be a park, right? <laughs> like it's like, but like, you know, you can't just go set up like a live, like a loud band in um, a public park necessarily um, uh, and, and get away with it. Um, you might be able to. Um, and then so there's live venues and then there's digital placement. So uh, I want you to just provide three ideas for where to place your material and why it would help you. So Color Wheel is the company that Jeff Linsenmeyer was talking about. It's his company. He runs it with Sean King, who's the drummer for the band Devotchka. And they it's an ad placement company. So that's one place to start. And he's, he mentioned others in his talk. You can go back and watch his talk if you want more ideas there. You can put beats that you've made up onto various different like, like open beat software stuff, like uh, Kitty Crimes was saying. Um, uh, you can look at other ad agencies. Um, uh, you can look at a publishing company contact or a possible manager. Um, and so by publishing company, it's somebody who would work on behalf of your catalog um, to get it out there. Um, uh, so like weirdly, I just signed, a rec uh, signed with BMG for my old band, even though we're not even a band anymore. Um, because Universal Music bought out the Blue Mountain Publishing, was which a, a smaller company. Um, so you might not be able to go straight for like a major publishing company like BMG right now, but I just want you to research what, what companies might be out there. Um, for a small artist, an unknown artist that tries to just reach out like like to an amorphous entity like like BMG, unless you have a team of people working on your stuff, um, you will just sort of fall through the cracks. It's just like if you're ASCAP or BM uh, or, or BMG right now, um, yes, there's a place that your money can go to be collected, but there's nobody really working directly on your behalf to get your material placed. Um, and so that could be a specific publishing company or a possible manager. And this is something everybody should be thinking about, whether you're a performer or just a writer, is like, what would it mean for you at this point in your career? Um, to have a manager. And if you don't care about marketing your music, <laughs> you can go to Creative Commons. You can put all of your stuff up on the, put a Creative Commons license on all your stuff and people can use it in their videos or for whatever. Um, uh, I am assuming that many of you, especially dime students, <laughs> are really thinking about this as a career and this is why I've created the assignment in the way that I have. Um, so then six, working as a community, how do you see collaborating with other songwriters helping your future? Are you starting collectives? Um, are you doing um, covering each other's songs? Are you doing mini COVID lockdown songs? This is something that, that Mario is, has been doing throughout the semester, um, but he's, he's not the only one. So like, is it something, this is where you can be creative. You can be like, oh, well, uh, I've got this little circle of songwriters. Maybe it's people from this class or other people from outside of class. And we have started this kind of collective entity and we're releasing songs every week and recycling other people's material so that when we're blasting people's social media pages like Facebook or um, Instagram or whatever, 
like it's not just it doesn't seem like one person is just like here's my work here's my work oh i wrote another song or another song because like that people get bored of that really quickly um so you might mix it up with a group of people and and call it whatever you will um in denver the elephant six collective as i mentioned in an earlier video lecture um uh was headed up by this guy robert schneider from the apples in stereo um, but that he produced Jeff Mangum of Neutral Milk Hotel and J Neutral Milk Hotel's record has become this really classic record from that time. But uh, the other people, bands in that collective were like Olivia Tremor Control, Elf Power, who's an Atlanta band, um, and then Apples and Stereo, The Minders, who I don't think, I don't know if they're around anymore, or, and then Dressy Bessie. So this was this kind of like indie pop kind of uh, um uh, collective uh, <clears throat> that they just called Elephant Six. Um, so anything like there, that that stuff, I just want you to do thinking about it and then of course um, how you might be collaborating with others. Um, go back to your earlier artist statement from the semester and just I would like a, a revised one um, and this can be just you know all dumped into the canvas page or you can weave it into to this package that I have listed for number eight here. Um, uh, you wanna package your EP neatly somewhere online. So for example, Bandcamp, or it can be some, somewhere more private if you're not wanting to publish your material that way. You can publish things on YouTube, for example, and not have it open to the public, but you can have it, make sure that it's not set to private, make sure it's shareable to other people. Um, or maybe it's all just in, um, like Alex Creighton has been doing it this way um, in a like in a Google type of shareable file um, that's fine too and then it's just only available to the people that you share it with um, but the idea here is that you have a package and um, it's of your collected material for this class however you conceive it and you can list like here's my EP of five songs, but I'm going to release these X amount of songs first um, in waves, all of that stuff. Uh, so that you could share it with a talent buyer or booking agent, um, a possible manager, um, an advertising company, a record label, whatever. So like, it's one thing to have all of these ideas, but like, like you want to be able to like, like when you reach out like like hey i i noticed that the lockdown they're gonna ease up on the lockdown which isn't likely right now but like they're gonna ease up on the lockdown um in february i would like to get an opening slot on any of the the um the touring bands that you might have in coming through right those kinds of reaching out to people and when you reach out to a booking agent so think back to jake miller way back in the early semester like the the more you can have your stuff together and you can say this is what i am this is what i can deliver then um uh the better ch your chances are of getting booked somewhere and the same thing for a manager like like ideally it would be great if we all had managers doing the business stuff for us so that we could do more of the writing but even nathaniel rateliff complained about that <laughs> in his life right about how much um, of the business stuff he still has to end up thinking about. Um, and then I'm gonna weight your grade like kind of 50-50 on this stuff, 50-50 on, on these questions and how thoroughly this stuff is done and then 50% on how many songs you turn in. So uh, you should turn in at least five songs. Uh, uh, if there's more than that, that's great, but turn in at least five songs. Um, completed versions of the workshop songs that you've got. And then that depends on how complete it was at the time that you workshopped it. Okay, that was a lot of information. We've got time to do it and there's not a lot more synchronous class and stuff. So this is the next, um, a little more than a month is all about you. Any questions that are coming up? Or ideas for alternatives. Roger, if we have a, a person in our family that we could um, uh, ask 
to be our advisor. Is that okay? Yes, that happens. You might want to include a prenuptial agreement if it's your marriage partner or something. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, and I'm not going to, to say who in, in this, but if um, a friend of mine, for example, did not, uh, this in this case, it was a guy who was a songwriter. Um, uh, he was getting big and he started going through a divorce and another friend of ours who'd been through it said, dude, you should just give your wife who you're divorcing. You should just agree with her right now. Give her like a hundred thousand dollars right now. And this is so far out of my own league. Like I, I would never have a hundred thousand dollars to give anyone. And the guy was like, no, like, I don't want to do that. And then they went to get a divorce and she walked with a million dollars so just saying like um and that's happened a lot like like to a lot of people that i've like i mean I, i'm lucky enough that i've known a lot of people who've gotten more famous and like 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 m most people in bands before like um and again i just i and i don't want to name names because i just don't want to bring people's personal lives into the thing but but many people in, in like bigger bands, they've started out married to somebody and they're not married to the same people like after the big long tours and stuff. Um, and that kind of unfortunately happens to people in grad school too. Um, so just be careful with family members. Um, and any uh, any kind of business book is going to, to tell you guys um, that most of your first booking agents, if you've never had one, or most of your first managers, a lot of times it's your friends, just like it's often your friends in your bands. And if you don't have healthy relationships, then somebody gets kicked out of the band and then the band takes off and then there's a bunch of bitter feelings. Um, so it's just good to think about what healthy relationships are around family members um, and how much you want their aesthetic like I, I decided not to work with this woman who has done well and wanted it would have been nice to play Carnegie Hall with her but I felt like her husband who was not a musician who was acting as her manager was just too overbearing and I, I couldn't deal with with them um, other questions I know that's like that that million dollar thing is like the biggest first world problem. <laughs> if you're having a million dollars to give away. Um another person just on while I'm thinking about that a friend of mine signed a $300,000 record deal with a major label. Um which is hard to come by these days, but this is a little while back and uh, started putting out records and then the, the record company had options on all of the this artist's future stuff. Uh, and then uh, again, this is a he, he started going through uh, a divorce and his wife su was suing him because she was says she was the inspiration for his songs. Um, and whether or not, like how it all plays out in that sort of situation, it usually ends up in some sort of a settlement. And you can say that's petty or, or no, she deserves it. Like, like she was supporting him or like, but it's messy stuff. <laughs> Other questions or thoughts? I'm, I'm sure people are taking their own paths and thinking about this. Does it seem pretty doable? And it's a huge assignment. It's it's a lot of work. Luckily, it's doable though. Yeah, and, mo and luckily most most of it is is going to be done in the next two weeks, right? Like with this, the song for this week and the song next week, you're not in writing mode anymore. 
you're in revising and packaging mode. Um, and again, that's why like next week will be the last synchronous class. And then this is just to give you time and space. Um, and you can be minimal on it, on it too. Um, but I've, again, like I've said, especially for you, um, former dime students, like, like my idea is that like, like for, for the class is like, if, if you're not planning, like, like, I don't think Connor, who's not in here today, I don't think Connor's planning on, on a big career. Although I really loved that song, Connor, that like you guys, did you guys hear his acapella song? Um, I loved that song <laughs> this weekend. Um, and feel like Connor could definitely do it if he wanted to do it. But, um, uh, you know, m my sense is that people who are going to, to paying money to go to school to um, have careers are people who want to do this. So it's, it's definitely directed that way. Um, and there's that negotiation process that we can have between you and, and your, your grade in the the week after fall break. So if you're starting in gung ho and like, like, um, I don't know, like, like you, you, you've, you've got really, really big plans and then something happens. It could be technical stuff. Unfortunately, I, and like knock on wood, but like ho hopefully nobody gets COVID, but we know that people in our class had COVID earlier this semester, right? They, as you guys have, you told me yourselves. <laughs> so, um, uh, there, there will always be flexibility for me in terms of stuff. So if you're struggling or like feeling like you're out of your depths, just reach out to me. I'm around all the time. Um, if you want to vie for something like personally, like radically different, or if you're, if you're like, you're like, Roger, this is like, this is cool, but it's just like, it has nothing to do with what I want to do and what my aspirations are. That's the time to just reach out to me personally and, and we can just figure it out. Um, if you're swimming and you want more of a points-based type of rubric type of thing too, um, if you just feel like it's like an abyss, um, uh, uh, it's, it's an abyss because I'm trying to be attentive to everybody, a really wide group of, of people's stuff here. Um, but if you need more direction or anything, I'm happy to, to, to do that. Other questions? <laughs> they will come up. <laughs> um, and so this is not just a songwriting thing. Um, it is a writing thing in general. Um, we actually know that research tells us that once you get an assignment, that's not for anyone in this class, once you get an assignment or something like this in your head, um, you are actually already starting to work on it at um, uh, maybe even precognitive levels. Um, and so most of us, um, whether we're writing songs or whether we're writing essays or chapters for books, most of us are procrastinators. We will wait till the last minute. <laughs> I've tried this semester to lay things out in a way that is healthy and productive. Like, oh, I'll work on lyrics one week. I'll work on a song the next week. The important thing is just to keep working or like with the Pat Patterson exercises, like make yourself do it every day. Make like, And so many people that came to visit us basically gave us that advice as well so it's about being able to to, to keep doing it um, and sustain a practice um, but i know darn well that like you know like you, we don't always do that you know I mean, in my own life like i'm <laughs> teaching five classes like i'm not writing a whole bunch of of songs right now um even though i have an album in the works Questions? I'm going to let you be silent for just a few more minutes here. And then I can shut this off and shut off the recording. And if you have personal questions, you can always reach out to me.
it's good to I don't have any question but I have like a comment I think everything that you're talking about is really good like especially for someone who's aiming to have a career like this in music like I was listening and like thinking about all the things you were saying and I'm like I haven't done any of this (laughs) so I'm definitely going to come back and like rewatch this and you know start working on some of these things and figuring out how I could go about doing that I really I really want to write one for other people but then also I want to work with more people and just like get myself more out there and I'm very introverted so yeah I think it's kind of like kind of hard but um this is all like stuff I need to be paying attention to like finding out how labels and stuff work and all that yeah and like for on the label stuff like um I mean that's how my band originally got signed we like we really liked the the record label 4AD and um uh we had heard because the Cocktoo Twins were a band on 4AD and like it was like Cocktoo Twins and Pixies and Ultra Vivid Scene and uh This Mortal Coil I believe but he started another record label um uh lots of bands that we liked and and so it was like then we heard that the cocktoo twins their contract was up and they were starting their own record label called bella union and we sent them a demo and they um they signed us eventually not immediately but that that's how we got signed it was just knowing that um that there were people with like that thought that we we might share aesthetic sensibilities. Do you know Phoebe Bridgers? No. Oh, Phoebe Bridgers is a singer songwriter from um, California, and I really I've been really like digging her music lately. Um, she uh, one of her like famous songs was um, uh, from her last album Kyoto, mm-hmm. and it's um, I, I just like I just like her style like her whole like aesthetic is just really like really really cool um you should check her out but anyway she um she started a her own label called satisfactory the satisfactory i think it's called Mm -hmm. and i've been submitting my demos the ones i've been posting on youtube i've been submitting them um on her website like the website's really cool like it's it's like a office theme website um and i've just been going there and sending them and there's like a little joke at the end it's like it's like the check mark. It's like, will Fe- um will the interns forget to give this to Phoebe? <laughs> and it's like check yes, and then I just like cl- click yes, and then that's how you submit them. But it's just like a joke. But um, <laughs> I've been submitting my demos there. Yeah, and you can also just I'm, I'm glad that you brought her up, but um, if you can also plan on starting your own label too, that can be part of your plan and this sort of stuff. I didn't really write that in because it's more of a songwriting class. But if if you are really big on self-releasing and you already have a plan there, just include that as part of your plan. That's um, cool. I'll think about that. And I know with like, even with the Cocktoo guys, like, like Robin Guthrie, the guitar player for Cocktoo Twins had a another band called Vital Indiana and he's been releasing his own stuff like his whole thing for starting a label was he just wanted a venue to release to keep releasing primarily his own music um and whereas Simon Raymond really wanted to be a producer and so he produced some of our stuff and and he's produced a lot of other stuff and continues to write songs and put out solo records too so but he primarily he really wanted to make a a whole collect a label collective. It's just people's different sensibilities. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I'm I'm around um, in my. Um, you should have it in, in any emails from me, but I'm generally in open office hours. Um, these are Mondays from, so I have two hours right before our class from 9 a.m. to 11 on uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, and then I usually chime out to do our class and then I chime back into Microsoft Teams. 
um, until 1.30. On mon so Mondays and then Tuesday mornings, um, I'm always have I'm and I'm just logged in with my computer, sitting here, <laughs> just waiting for somebody to ding in um, to me. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, and and it, it should be a, there should be a link in my signature lines. Although if I've sent you stuff th straight through Canvas, I'm not sure if it always puts my signature on. Um, but if you send me, if, if you're not finding a link to my office hours, just send me an email to my email address, which is greenrog at msudenver.edu. Or you can look, you know, if you forget, you can always look me up through the Metro English Department. Just remember, I'm an English professor. Um, and uh, I can send you a quick link. Um, but if if you have in any email for me where there's a signature line, um, there's a open office hours Zoom link. And during that, those times, like 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, you can just click the link and I should just be sitting here doing whatever I'm doing, <laughs> grading papers or, or um, prepping modules or whatever. Um, and if you need me outside of that time, I'm, I'm working from home. So I'm generally not around Thursday afternoons because I'm in another Zoom meeting. And Tuesday afternoons, I usually have another Zoom meeting or a faculty meeting. But Wednesdays, Fridays, generally open if you just need to have a quick video chat. Okay. Was somebody saying something? Sorry, I unmuted myself to say thank you and then my mom was talking to me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, just reach out to me. I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Just reach out to me if you uh, need more clarification or if you want to tweak the assignment. Um, just think primarily of what you need and want to get out of the class. That is much more important to me than, you know, than, than some sort of abstract thing that I'm imposing on you all. Um, okay. I'm going to end things unless some or stop recording here.